Hi everyone, and welcome to this tutorial bite for Officers Not Included, which is a quick guide to overheating and melting. I'm going to start with melting, which is quite straightforward in that almost all materials in the game have a melting point at which they turn into a liquid. This needs to be carefully considered when constructing pipes, wires or machines to ensure they don't melt. As these are constructed of either metal ores, refined metals or minerals, it's unlikely that these will melt in most applications. The melting temperatures are laid out here for clarity. We are using lead, which is a refined metal, as it melts at 330 degrees and this is not too difficult to achieve. For high temperature applications such as rocket exhausts for petroleum and hydrogen engines, or when using magma, you need to be particularly careful with material choices. As temperatures can reach nearly 2000 degrees Celsius, the only metal ore that won't melt is wolframite, and the only refined metal is tungsten. Of course steel, which is manufactured in the mid-game, and the space materials niobium and thermium, will also remain solid at these temperatures, and can be used to build things made from both metal ores and refined metals. When using minerals for these applications, obsidian is the only choice, although for insulated tiles or pipes it may be suitable to use other materials due to their slow heat exchange. On to the second topic, overheating is when an active building goes over its operating temperature, starts taking damage and will eventually break. It typically affects active machines that require power, but there are a few exceptions to this. You can check whether a building is affected by overheating or not in the info card when placing building plans, as you can see here. If an overheat temperature is not stated, then the building doesn't have one. The most common base overheat temperature is 75 degrees, but there are a few exceptions. Although this is fine for many applications, there are many others that require higher temperatures. Depending on what type of material the machine is made from, will determine your options to increase this overheat temperature. For metal ores, gold amalgam is the only ore that improves overheat temperature, rating it by 50 degrees, so typically to 125 degrees Celsius. And for refined metals, beware using lead as it decreases overheat temperature by 20 degrees. Copper, gold, iron and tungsten all increase overheat temperature by 50 degrees. Again, being used for buildings made out of both metal ores and refined metals, steel provides a powerful plus 200 degrees overheat bonus. This is why it's so valued and denotes the mid-game, allowing you to better deal with hot geysers, build aqua tuners for cooling, as well as access space in the base game. The space metal niobium gives a giant plus 500 degrees increase to overheat temperature, but thermium is the best resource in the game, giving plus 900 degrees. Using Thermium unlocks some of the most complex builds in the game and is almost guaranteed to not overheat in almost any situation except extremely hot environments such as magma, which is still too hot. Lastly, moving on to minerals, I'm using storage bins here to represent such buildings, although these do not actually overheat. Pitcher pumps and glass forges are some of the most common overheating machines to use minerals. For buildings made from these, igneous rock, granite and obsidian give a modest plus 15 degrees overheat, but the maximum you can achieve is plus 200 degrees from ceramic. Despite being lower than the metal bonuses, this is usually sufficient for the few machines that are built from minerals. The final quick point I want to cover in this tutorial is on cooling, although I will discuss this in more depth in another tutorial bite. As machines produce heat and will eventually overheat, they may need active cooling. This is particularly challenging in space environments as the vacuum does not allow heat transfer. In this demonstration, I have an auto sweeper working hard and a cooling loop running behind it. Despite the cooling loop, it's still overheating as it's in a vacuum. The solution to this is to add a thin layer of liquid to the tiles behind the machines. I can do this with the pitcher pump. This then lets the cooling loop conduct heat and thus prevents overheating. So that's all for this quick tutorial bite on overheating and melting in oxygen not included. I hope this was interesting and thanks for watching.